Today is going to be fun. I was recently browsing online and I stumbled across this LED pocket microscope and it was a whole $13 on Amazon. So I picked one up and this is a really cool little gadget. I'll put a link to it in the description in case you're interested too, but it's not a sponsor at all. Today we're just going to see what kind of animal related objects or animals themselves we can view at a microscopic level. all we're going to look at today. It'll be a learning experience for us and we're just gonna find things as we go along. But the things I want to start with would be just a leaf from a reptile enclosure, a springtail, and an isopod. And then we'll see where it goes from there. Item number one, a leaf. Oh, that is cool. Whoa, that's really neat. But it is just a leaf, so Let's move on to a springtail. Okay, I think he's in here. <gasps> Whoa! That's cool, they're like fuzzy. That's a springtail! Oh, look at his little eyes! Aww! They have hairy legs. Yeah, they do. Let's see, I have a very shallow, what would be a depth, depth of, of field. Yeah, very shallow depth of field, so you can only see parts of them clear at a time. They look like little isopods almost. I mean, elongated, but that's so weird. Hi, little dude. Who couldn't love that face? They have like a moon, like a colorful head. Yeah, they do. It's actually, yeah, you're right. That's really colorful. Who'd have thunk? Oh no, he got away. He moved millimeters to the right. Yeah. Man, I wish I could turn him sideways to see his like jumping apparatus. I'm surprised he's not springing away. Oh, and he yeah, sprung, sprung away. away. All right. We have a springtail. Somehow, we got it on its side. So you can see it's antennae up there. These cute little legs. And back here, I'll add an arrow so you can see where it is, but his tail is tucked underneath his abdomen there. So that is what they shoot out or fling outwards to spring away from something that's threatening them. You would never catch that on camera. No, you wouldn't. Oh my gosh! That's what a springtail looks like. That is so strange. Their faces look like manatees. Oh, look at the cute little guy. Cute little baby springtail. That is so weird. Look at his little face. Springtails don't go through complete metamorphosis like butterflies and moths do with a pupa or chrysalis phase. Instead, they hatch from their eggs and become very tiny nymphs or just small versions of the adults. Then as they eat and grow, they molt five to ten times until they molt into their final adult stage. And then even as an adult, they'll continue molting that exoskeleton up to around 50 times in their lifetime. However, after they become an adult, or after around their 10 to sometimes 15th molt, they don't grow anymore when they molt. Springtails are detritivores, meaning they eat decaying matter. So for their entire life cycle, minus the egg phase of course, they'll eat decaying leaves and wood, and they'll eat feces along with bacteria and funguses too. That's why so many reptile keepers have springtails in tropical soil. They do need tropical soil or at least some humidity because this being, this is a Fulsomia species of springtail and they will dry out and die if the soil becomes too dry. Next up, isopods. Oh man, you were staying still earlier. This is gonna be more difficult than I thought. Okay, stay right there. Huh, <sighs> we had him under the microscope there and then he crawled out and ran over there. Hey dude. You're not helping us film, you know that? Oh no, he's stuck on his back. Yeah, isopod! That's a dwarf white isopod belly. Took forever. Oh, there's his face. Oh, he's not happy. Oh, look at him go. I'm sorry you're on your back. It was the only way to keep you still. Ah, that's kind of cool. Next, we're going to do this teeny tiny little walking stick. We're gonna see if we can find his face. Oh, he's swaying. This might not be good. Yeah, it's gonna be a pretty hard one. Yes, it will be. We're gonna find your face. Let's see what it looks like up close. I wanna see his eyes. Yeah. That's his leg, and that's his back. That's all I can fit into the frame with this teeny tiny baby walking stick. I think his head is to the left. So this way? Yeah. Oh, he's moving forward. That's his butt. Come back. Stop moving. He's doing his sway thing. Really? Oh, that's his head. Oh, nice. There. Wow. Look at those compound eyes. 
I think humans should have compound eyes. Oh, that'd be cool. See so much better. That is awesome. Whoa, fancy. Whoa. There we go. We're going to mix it up a little bit, and you guys have to guess what we're looking at now. We'll give you a few clues. You could technically eat this. Mm, it's pretty soft to the touch. Mm. It is both brown, as you're seeing here, and white. <laughs> that doesn't help much. You can nope. see it on the... <laughs> it is... A tortilla. a tortilla! Okay, next, we're going to look at a feather, one of Cheyenne's feathers up close. So you've got, that you can see with the your just naked eye, you've got your quill here, and this part running up the center is the rachis, or the shaft, and then branching out from the shaft are these barbs, and those are the colored pieces here, those are the barbs. But what you don't see are interlocking segments that connect these barbs together called barbules. So that's what I want to see under this microscope, are the barbules. All right, we're going to see how well this works, and yes, I'm laying my phone on here so that it like hovers right above the microscope. And yes, I did need this pamphlet because it was like two millimeters too short before. So here we go. Nice, okay. So each of those blue lines is one of those barbs that again, branches off from the center shaft or rachis. And then as we focus in, now you can see the barbules, which are those black little lines that go the opposite direction. And these interlocking segments are what kind of zipper together to hold the entire feather together. Each one of those barbules has a hook at the end called a hooklet, and that's what locks everything together in between those barbs. That is so cool. I did not think that's what that would look like. Me neither, especially with the little purple dot in the middle. There's a uh, few of those purple dots. I like how it's blue and yellow. Yeah, oh my gosh, I didn't even see the yellow. Weird. Do you know what this is, guys? This does have to do with reptiles. It's not a tortilla. You could technically eat it, though. I guess you could eat it you if you wanted. You might want to eat this one, but you could <laughs> technically eat it still. This is something that you actually could have in your house. Soon. Soon. Ready? This... What's your guesses? Wait, what are your guesses? This is... The Snake Discovery Coloring Book! Available either now or very soon on the website! SnakeDiscovery.com, go check it out! Get a coloring book! We have tons of them. Uh, yeah. And the first 500 to sell will be signed by both myself and Ed. Next, we're going to do our horned frog. <laughs> what do you look like? What the heck is that? That's got to be a chunk of moss on her. Oh yeah, it's totally a chunk of moss. All right, let's look at her skin, not what looks like a growth. Oh, there we go. Oh, her skin looks so porous. It does. Well, I guess they, they absorb water through their skin. I guess, yeah. That is pretty cool, if I do say so myself. I know. There you go, South American horn frog skin. I would not have guessed it looked like that. And that brown thing is just a piece of moss or something. But that is your skin. It looks so porous and weird. You can do that with that. Whoa, what's that? That's a pink spot on her. Oh, that's one of her pink spots. Next, we have Hypno, our pixie frog, or African bullfrog. What do you look like? You're so chunky, by the way. <laughs> okay, don't bite Ed. That's cool. So parts are blurry because he's kind of bumpy, so parts that are too close to the camera are blurry, whereas it only looks at a very shallow depth of field. That I'm surprised cool. he has so much yellow. Yeah, I, I'm surprised he has that much yellow, too. And all those black flakes? Yeah. Or flecks? Those are so pretty. Wow, dude. dude. You're so pretty. You're a very pretty frog. You're a pretty boy. Look at your yellow, or look at your orange. Oh. Oh, look at all that orange. You're so flabby. Definitely a boy. Can I see your front? Oh, no. No, don't look at my big toes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, we're going to do shed skin versus real skin, or scales, on a snake. This is the first shed we got from our anaconda. So I'm kind of curious to see what that looks like. Oh, look at that. There's a scale. Aww. There's a little scale. That's cool. You can see how much the scale overlaps over the one below it. Blue. Whoa, there's that scale. Yeah. And then the skin below it. That's wow. so weird. That is cool. It's actually really pretty. Like, that looks like it would be iridescent in the light. Mm-hmm. 
So that's probably why snakes look iridescent in the light is because of just that outer layer of skin. Yeah. Cool. All right. Can do uh, Martha? Let's do Martha. Hi, cutie. Ooh, that looks good. That does look cool. You can definitely see the overlapping scales now. Yeah, you could actually see them moving, like shifting across one another. There we go. Let's see as she moves. Ah, oh, cool. You can see them like move together. Oh, and she moved out of frame. You can see it for a second though. <laughs> Jeez, now she's really moving. Stay still, Martha. <laughs> Stop moving. Oh, cool. You can see the scales like sliding into each other. Okay, one more snake. We're doing Charlotte. Oh, Charlotte. Right. Albino twin spot hognose snake. She might be pretty hard to do though. Yeah, she might be moving around a lot. Okay. That's cool. Like porous. Yeah, that's her skin in between her scales. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, there's a scale. Oh, yeah. That is so you can cool. See, you can see that keel in there. Yeah, you can see the bee. Oh, cool. There's like a little overlap. She's a, just about to shed her skin, too. Oh, is she? Yeah, so you can see, I think that might be the shed at the tip of the scale oh. there. Like the skin's starting to come off? Yeah, like that's the layer that's going to come off. That's cool. Yeah, it is. That's that's really cool. Well, that was just awesome. I was pleasantly surprised at how many things we were able to see up close. Again, with living animals, it's kind of hard to get them in focus, so I'm sorry if that footage was kind of shaky, but we tried our best. But yeah, overall, I'd say this little mini microscope is a really neat little gadget. So I will put, I mean, it's not a sponsor or anything. We just, again, found this little guy on Amazon, but for 13 bucks, you can't beat that as a little education tool, especially if you have kids who want to look at random things up close. I mean, it was, pretty cool. So I'll put a link to it in the description below in case you want to pick one out. Um, but thank you to all of our Patreon backers for supporting our channel. I know it wasn't much, but your funds did pay for this so we could do this video today. So thank you so much. And it goes to so many other things that relate to our animals as well. So you Patreon backers are incredibly generous and allow us to do all sorts of fun things. Let me know in the comments which thing that we saw today under the microscope was your favorite. I thought my favorite thing to see up close was going to be the snake scales. But then I was surprised with how sweet the compound eyes of the walking stick were. Those were really cool to see up close. So that was my favorite thing today. Let me know in the comments what your favorite thing was today and we'll see you next time. Of course there's a train going by. Yep. Okay. And a loud horn too. Mm-hmm. Keep going. I know you have two more. One more. There. By the way, this is Ed's job, lining it up, because I can't do it for the life of me. But he can get it, the... No, he's on his top. He's on his... Oh, he's, so he's upside down? No, he's on his... Oh, he's right side up? Dang yeah. it. Okay, I'll have to try again. Thank you. As soon as we put the microscope on him, he's going to move. Okay, let's see. <gasps> oh, dang it! He moved! Told ya. Ooh, I got something in focus. Oh, there he goes. Emily went up to grab some cork bark to try something, and I saw the little guy escaping. I don't know where he is. It's because he's not... He's not in there. He's not in there anymore. Now we have to find him. Except Ed knows where he is. Where did he go? Huh. No. There he is. <laughs> he's under the box. No, come back this way. <laughs>